Hello. Uh, welcome to the, our final exam review. We'll go ahead and we'll get started with question number one. We need to solve the linear equation negative 6 times x minus 2 plus 3 equals 9 minus x minus 4. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute everything into our parentheses. So I'm going to distribute this minus 6. In this, and I'm going to distribute the minus sign because I don't want to forget that it's a minus x in a minus 4. Don't, you know, don't just put it on just the first x. So we'll have minus 6x plus 12 plus 3 equals 9 minus x minus 4. I'm going to go ahead and group, group all my stuff together. So plus 12 plus 3 is a 15. And 4, uh, sorry, 9 minus 4 is going to be 5. From here, I'm going to add 6x to both sides. So, I guess I'll, I'll, go, I'll go below, actually. So I'll have 15 equals 5 plus 5x. I'll subtract 5 from both sides, so I have 10 equals 5x. So x equals 2. And that is going to be our final answer. Um, to double check, we can go ahead and plug it in. So minus 6, 2 minus 2, plus 3. Uh, 2 minus 2 is 0. So 6 times 0 plus 3. We just get 3 on the left side, and on the right side we, we get 9 minus 2 plus 4, 9 minus 6, and that also gets us 3. So 3 equals 3, that checks out. So our answer is x equals 2. Going on to the next one, it wants us to solve the rational equation. Uh, x over x plus 5 equals minus 5 over x plus 5 plus 5 over 4. So, the first thing we're going to do before we actually go about solving it is I'm going to look at the bottoms of my fractions and figure out for which x do, do those equal 0. So, in this case, we have 2x plus 5, so 0. So, that is my restriction. If I get an answer of x equals negative 5, and if that won't work, because if I try to plug it back into the equation, minus 5 plus 5 is 0, you can't divide by 0. So, from there, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and solve this. Just remember, at the end, if we get x equals negative 5, we can't use it. I'm going to first, I see this, these x minus 5s on the bottom, and I see this 4. I'm going to try to get rid of all the fractions. I'm going to multiply everything by my common denominator, which is 4x plus 5. Multiply it. Make sure I multiply all of these, not just a couple of them. So, I'll have 4x four four x plus 5 times x over x plus 5 equals 4x plus 5 times minus 5 over x plus 5 plus 4x plus 5 times 5 over 4. So in this first one, these x plus 5s cancel. And they can't, those also cancel in the second one, and the last one, the 4s will cancel. So rewriting this, we have 4x equals 4 times minus 5 plus 5, x plus 5. I'll go ahead and multiply these two together. So a 4x equals minus 20 plus, and I'll distribute that, 5x plus 25. Keep on working down here. So combining things together, we have 4x is going to equal minus 20 plus 5 is going to be 5 plus 5x. And I'll subtract the f uh, 5x is over. So I have negative x equals 5, so that means that x divided by the negative sign is negative 5. And it's tempting to leave that as my final answer, but you've got to remember, that's our restriction. So we're going to say there is no solution. Because that was our restriction, there is no answer. And another way we can write no solution is we call it the empty set. It's, we're going to put a little squiggle, these little brackets. And we're not going to put anything inside. The brackets mean this is the list of all the solutions. And we're not going to list any because there is none. So that is our final answer for that one. Okay, going on to this next one, it gives us this word problem. Dexter's truck gets 32 miles per gallon on the highway and 24 miles per gallon in the city. The amount of gas he uses, which is A, so A is our amount of gas, is given by A equals 1 over 24C 
plus 1 over 32h, where c is the number of city miles and h is the number of highway miles. Okay, if you drove 60 miles in the city and used 9 gallons of gas, how many highway miles did he drive? So we're looking for h. We want h. And what are we given? We're given c and the amount of gas he used, so a. So I can plug those into my equation. So I know 9 will equal 1 over 24 times 60 uh, plus 1 over 32h. I will do, I'll, I'll go ahead and do 1 over 24 times 60. And that's going to be, I got 2 and a half. I'll subtract this two and a half over, so nine minus two and a half is gonna be six and a half. And then I'll multiply each side by 32. And multiplying each side by 32, I got, sorry, I just gotta make sure I put this in right. 208 is gonna equal H. So how many highway miles did he drive? Well, it's, it's a word problem, so we're gonna answer it in word form. He drove uh, 208 highway miles. Okay, for this next one, it tells us Max and Molly plan to put down all weather carpeting on their porch. The length of the porch is two feet longer than twice the width, and the perimeter is 64 feet. So, okay. Let's go through that, like, not sentencing. The length, which I'll call is L, of the porch is, is kind of going to be a card, equals two feet longer, so two plus twice the width, so two times the width. It also tells us our perimeter is 64 feet. Well, our perimeter, that is, if like I have this, like, porch, right, it's my width, width, L and L, so it's going to be two L's plus two W. It's going to be 64. But because we have, we know what L is, how L and W are connected, I can replace this L with that whole thing. So two times two plus two W plus two W equals 64. And now I can solve for W and then it gives me my width. And once I have my width, I can find my length. So I'll just should be the 2, so 4 plus 4w plus 2w equals 64. 4 plus 6w equals 64. 6w equals 60. And w would be 10. Because we know that w is 10, I can go ahead. Oh, don't know what I just did there. I can go ahead and I can plug that back in up here. So... L is going to be 2 plus 2 times 10. So L is going to be 2 plus 20. L is 22. So what are our dimensions? Uh, I'll say 22 feet by 10 feet. So how many square feet of carpeting should they buy if they add 10% for waste? So, thinking about this, they're going to need to buy, well, enough area to cover this whole thing in 10% extra, right? So, I'll say it's going to be the area plus 10%, so 0.1, times the area, right? This is 10% of the area, 10% of area, which is our waste. And that's just our area. And as a side note, if I have like x plus 0.1x, well, there's an invisible one here. I can combine these to 1.1x. So in this case, this is the same thing as doing 1.1 times the area. And if you want to do it the other way, like where you do the area and you add 0.1 times it, that's also fine. So our area is equal to length times width. So 1.1 times length times width, which is the same thing as 
times 10 times 22. And when I plugged all that into my calculator, I got 242. So to go ahead and put this as a sent, I'll go and put this as a sentence because it gives it to us as a sentence. Uh, they should uh, buy 242 square feet. All right, so now we're going to look at number five. Number five says Fintan invested money in a three-year CD that returned the equivalent of 4.4% simple interest. He invested $2,000 less in an 18-month CD that had a 3% simple interest return. If the total amount of interest from these investments was $706.50, determine how much was invested in each CD. So the first thing I want to do is set up an equation for each CD. So for the first CD, we'll say, um, we'll go with the three-year CD first. All right, so the equation for simple interest will be I equals P times R times T, okay? And so for the three-year CD, I'm going to just say these are all I1, P1, R1, and T1, all right? And I know what the rate and amount of time are for the three-year CD, but I don't know what the principal is. In fact, that's what I'm trying to find out. So I'm going to say I1 equals P1 times 0 0.044 times 3. Okay. So 3 is the number of years. 0 0.044 is the interest rate. And then doing the same for I2, something that says is that Fenton invested $2,000 less, okay? So that means that the second principle is going to P, be P1 minus 2,000, all right? P1 minus 2,000 times 0 0.03 times 1.5. So I did 1.5 here instead of 18 because I want my time to be in the same units. I established that time was in years when I put three for the first one, and taking eight, 18 months into years, that'd be 1.5, because 12 months is one year, and then the leftover six would be half a year. All right? And I also know that the total amount of interest from these investments was $706.50. So this means I1 plus I2 equals $706.50, okay? And so after this, um, we're going to distribute the things, distribute everything in I1 and I2, I'm gonna put it into this equation. So I'll show you that now. So what we're gonna have is, let's see, after distributing, We'll get 0 0.132 P1, okay? Um, and I'll move that back in just a second. 0 0.132 P1 plus 0 0.045 P1 minus 90 equals $706.50, okay? So now I'm gonna combine like terms and move 90 to the other side. Doing so gives me 0 0.177 P1 equals $796.50. Okay. And then if I divide both sides by 0 0.177, I will get that P1 equals $4,500. Okay, great. And it should be pretty easy to figure out what the amount invested in the second one was because we already know that it's two thousand dollars less so this means that p2 equals twenty five hundred dollars and that's two two thousand dollars less than forty five hundred 
Okay, so for problem six, we were given that Rachel drove from Miami to Orlando, a total distance of 240 miles. She drove for an hour in sea traffic and for three hours on the highway. For average speed on the highway was 20 miles an hour faster than her speed in the city. Term her average speed in the city and her average speed traveling on the highway. Well, the first thing I see is we're given total distance. We're given time on the city, time on the highway. And we were given some information on about speed. So highway was 20 uh, miles an hour faster than her speed. And we're looking for speed in the city. So I'm going to give that a variable. I'll say x. Speed in the city. Well, from there, I'm going to go back to our first thing that we're given, our total distance. I'm going to use the fact that your that the total distance, well, it's the distance in the city plus the distance on the highway. But maybe you know we don't really have much about those. So let's break down these distance in the city things. So our my distance in the city or my distance is always just equal to my rate or which that's a speed, you know, speeds are rates, times time. So if I think about in the city, her distance um, in the city, well, it's her rate, which is her speed. We don't know. We call, we're going to call that X times the amount of time she drove in the city, which was one hour. Their distance highway, well, we don't know... Um, what her speed is, but we do know her speed on the highway was 20 faster than her speed in the city. So I'll say it's our speed in the city plus 20. If for how long did you drive on the highway or did she drive on the highway? Three hours. So our time is three. So I know my distance in the city is just going to be X. What is is the highway is three times X plus 20. Well, I know my total distance. I now know what my distance in the city in terms of X is and on the highway. So I'll use that. 240 is going to equal my distance in the city, which is X, plus 3 times X plus 20. Well, I can distribute my 3. I'll get 3X plus 60. Know the fact that that was a very poorly drawn 3. And that's going to equal to 40. X plus 3X is going to be 4X. From here, I'm going to subtract that. So I have 180. It's going to be 4x. Uh, 180 divided by 4 is going to be 45. And this is speed, so we'll do miles per hour. And that is speed in the city. So highway, well, we know the highway was 20 miles an hour faster. So 65 miles per hour is highway. Okay, well, I realized since um, it stopped recording, so I went and I wrote it out. Uh, I just said what the answers we got were. But um, if it gives you like a word problem, they're going to uh, want like a sentence as an answer, right? They give it to you in words, and when you want you to respond in words. So that's just writing it out. Going on to number seven, we're going to perform the indicated operations, and we're going to write in standard form, which is our... A plus B I, where A is like the number without it, any I's on it, B is the one obviously with it. Okay, for this first one, well, it's just addition. So we, we can just go ahead and add across. So minus 8 plus 6 is minus 2. 3 plus negative 5 is also minus 2. So it's going to be minus 2, minus 2I. Two and we're done with that one. For part B, we need to be a little more careful. One thing I'm going to do to make this to make sure I'm careful, is I'm going to distribute my minus sign first. So 12 minus 5i, and I can drop these parentheses because there's no like, there's nothing on the outside of them. Minus 9 plus 7i, and if I were to go ahead and combine, 12 minus 9 is 3. Minus 5i plus 7i is plus 2i. Now for this one, this is multiplication. So we can't just like combine, we're going to have to foil this out. 
So we're going to FOIL it. So we're going to do our first, which is going to be 5 times minus 4, which is minus 20. Outer, plus 25i. Inner, minus 3i times minus 4i is going to be a 12i. And my last one is going to be th minus 3i times 5i is going to be minus 15i squared. Well, first, I'm going to just bring down this minus 20. I can combine these to be 37i. And then i squared is negative 1. So this is minus 15 times minus 1, which is the same thing as plus 15. Minus 20 plus 15 is minus 5 plus 37i. And that's our answer for that one. So for this one, I'll go down here. We have 4 minus 3i over 6 plus 5i. And uh, to simplify these, we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by our complex conjugate of our denominator. So what that is, it's a fancy way of saying switch the sign on just the thing involving the i. And we can go ahead and we'll multiply out. So on top, we'll foil this. So it's going to be first, 24, outer, minus 20i, inner, this would be minus 18i, last is going to become plus 15i squared. And we'll simplify that later. On the bottom, it's going to be 36. Uh, outer is going to be minus 30i. Inner is going to become plus 30i. And our last is going to be minus 25i squared. Well, the 30i is cancel. And we'll go ahead and we'll group some stuff up. Uh, this is 24 minus 38i. And then i squared is going to get minus 1, so this becomes a minus 15. And on the bottom, we just bring it 36 plus 25, which is, I believe, 61. Um, I'll keep working it. I'll like, drop down here. I'll see if I can move the screen. So we have on top, 24 minus 15 is 9 minus 38i over 61. And it's tempting to end there, but remember, we need it to be something plus something else. So we need to split this fraction. So I'll say this is going to be 9 over 61 minus 38 over 61i. And that's in the form uh, um, a plus bi. It's simply a minus bi because b was negative, but that's fine. As long as it's like two separate things. So we, they can't all be in one fraction. And that is our answer here. I'll circle our other answers. And that's it for that page. So going on to this page, uh, number eight says solve that quadratic equation by factoring. It's a zero product property, which probably sounds scarier than what it actually is. We'll talk about that when we get there. So I'm going to bring my, oh, I'm in highlighter mode. Don't want to do that. I'm going to bring my 24 over. So I'm going to subtract that to the left side. And then um, it says it wants to do it by factoring. So what adds to 8, or sorry, what almost spoiled part of the answer there, or it did, what adds to 5, but multiplies to be negative 24. So it means I'm going to have a positive thing and a negative thing. And it's going to be positive 8 and minus 3. And this zero product property thing is basically saying if you have two factors and they're multiplied by each other, we can just set each of them equal to zero and solve. So x plus 8 equals zero. So x equals minus 8. And x minus 3 equals zero. So x equals 3. And those are our two answers. Okay, going on to the next one. Solve the quadratic equation by completing the square. Okay. I'm going to do this off on the side because I'm going to probably need the space. So we have x squared minus 14x plus 7 equals 0. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of like write this again. Okay, but I'm going to move the 7 like way over here. I need to remember I have the plus 7 there, but I don't want this to you know have to use this in my completing the square. So whenever I complete the square, I take this middle thing, which is minus 14, and divide it by 2, which is minus 7. I'm going to take that, I'm going to square it, which is positive 49, and I'm going to add that to one side, and I'll subtract it from the other. 
Um, so I'll, or sorry, I can either, I, let me rephrase. I can either add it to both sides or I can add it and subtract it on one. So I'm just gonna add it on both sides. And then I'm gonna go and subtract the seven. I could have done that earlier. Um, if you do it like later or earlier, it's the same thing. So x squared minus 14x plus 49 equals 42. And when we complete the square, this, uh, once we do that, we add to both sides, this factors. And specifically, it factors to x minus 7 squared. Here's a little secret. It's that number, right? It's x minus 7 squared. Oh my gosh, look, it's like right up there. There's a reason. But, but yeah, whatever this number is, right, you know, in there, that's going to be the thing next to the x. Just a little fun fact for you. Equals 42. Well, now we need to solve for x, so I'll square root both sides. Be careful. When you square root, when you in, when you introduce a square root, you got to put a plus or minus. Then I'll add 7. So x is going to be 7 plus or minus square root of 42. And now we're done. 7 plus or minus square root of 42. Okay. Next one, I want us to solve this using our quadratic formula. So we have our quadratic formula, first off. If you don't remember it, learn it. It's going to be negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So our a is 3, or our b is minus 5, and our c is minus 4. So if I apply that, it's going to be minus minus 5, so positive 5, plus or minus square root of minus 5 squared minus 4 times 3 times minus 4, all over 2 times 3. Well, simplify the inside. Uh, 5 plus or minus um, negative 5 squared is 25. 4 times 3. Uh, if I multiply minus 4 times 3, you get minus 12. Times another minus 4 is going to be a plus 48 over 6. 48, that is going to be 5 plus or minus square root of 73 over 6. So our answer is going to be, sorry, this is this tells us what x equals. So it's going to be x equals 5 plus square root of 73 over 6 and 5 minus square root of 73 over 6. We Because we can't simplify this any further. And that's our final answer. I will clean this up real quick and then we'll start on the next one. Okay, going on to this next one, we have a patio from a rectangle and two right triangles of equal size are attached to the two ends. The length of the rectangle is 20. The base of the right angle is that. Um, and we know it's three less than the height. So, okay, the length of the, the base of the right triangle is three less than the height of the right triangle. The total area of the patio is 348. Determine the height of the triangular portions. Okay, so the total area of this patio is 348. It also gives us this nice little picture. Well, to figure out what the total area is, well, it's going to be the area of this plus the area of our triangles. So, the area of the middle part, well, it's going to be uh, base times height, so 20, and our height is x. The area of our first, well, we're going to have two triangles, so I'll do two times the area of each of them. They're the same size. Area of triangle is one half, our base, which is x minus three, times our height, which is x. And because this is the rectangle plus two triangles, that is our total area, so that's gonna be 348. Well, two times one half, those cancel. So I mean it's 20x plus x times x minus three equals 348. I can distribute this x. So we have 20x plus x squared minus 3x equals 348. Um, I can combine uh, the x's, so x squared plus 17x equals 348. And I can subtract this over. So I have x squared plus 17x Minus 348 equals 0. 
and I can go ahead and I can try and figure out like uh, if this like uh, factors and like all that stuff. I use my quadratic formula as well, so I'll have negative 17 plus or minus the square root of 17 squared minus 4 times 17, or sorry, 4 times 1, because that's our A, times minus 348 all over 2. And when I go ahead and I plug that in, I'm going to get x equals 12. I also get like a negative number, but like the negative number doesn't matter because like you can't have a negative like height. So we figure out x, uh, that is the height. So the height of the triangle is 12 feet. And we also need to know what the base is because it wants the, right, do we know the base? I don't know if we need if we if we need to know what the base is, but just in case, I'll say the base is nine feet because it's three less than our height. Okay, so for this next one, it tells us in a classic Seinfeld episode, Jerry tosses a loaf of bread, specifically marble rye, straight upward to his friend George, who's leaning out the third story window. The loaf of bread leaves Jerry's hands at one meters with an initial velocity of of eighteen meters per second. Write an equation for the vertical position. Um, and it gives us like the format right here of the bread where S is the vertical position in meters and it's T seconds after release. And we can use either the gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared or 32 feet per second squared. And we'll pick based on our units. So this first one just wants to write out the equation for S. So I'll start with S equals, well, it's going to be negative one half. Our G, which... It's a, it gives me meters here and meters here, so it's going to be 9.8, because that's in meters. T squared plus V0. That means initial velocity, or velocity at time zero, which is the velocity at the start. So do you know how fast it left his hand? Yes, 18 meters per second. So 18 T plus, and then our initial height. Well, how, how high up was the red when it left his hand? Well, it left his hand at a meter high. And we can go in and we can simplify this. So it's going to be negative 1 half times 9 point, negative 4.9t squared plus 18t plus 1. And that is the final answer for this first part. For the second part, how long will it take uh, the bread to reach George if he catches it on the way up at a height of 16 meters? Well, I'll, s is our height. So that means I'll put 16 in for s minus 4.9t squared plus 18t, plus 1. And I'll try and solve for t. Well, I'm going to bring subtract the 16 over, have it equal to 0. Because when this equals 0, we can use our, it's going to be minus 15, quadratic formula. So negative b, plus or minus our square root, b squared, minus 4, a, and that's minus 15, C, all over 2A. And I'm going to really quick, I'm just going to, I'll plug in the plus into my calculator really quick. And I get, yeah. 1.28, and I also get 2.4. And so I have two answers here, um, one from the minus, one from the plus. And so it was on the way up. If I think about like someone, you know, throwing a piece of bread, it's a very circular piece of bread up to some dude in the building. This is a person in the building. And he's catching on the way up. That's going to be that one, right? It's not the best drawing. Just imagine this person has really long arms. So it's going to be our first time. So in other words, it's just going to be Near tenth of a second, so t is going to be 1.3. And that's seconds. And that's our answer. 
Okay, I just went ahead and I wrote in wrote it as a sentence because it gives you in sentences and you answer in sentences. Uh, next up, and he says to solve the, the rational equation. I missed a spot. Um, well, the first thing I do when I see that is I need to list what are my restrictions. Well, it's going to be when our bottom equals zero. So for the first one, x cannot be 5. It cannot be negative 1 because that's from the first two. This right here will factor to x minus 5, x plus 1. So we've already covered both of those. So if we get 5 or negative 1, we throw those out because it just can't, that can't happen. Otherwise, we're dividing by 0. So 3x over x minus 5. I'm going to rewrite this. I'm just with the second, with the very last fraction, the, the back part of it's going to be factored. 40 over x plus 5, x plus 1. Sorry, x minus 5, x plus 1. Let me fix that. Well, I don't like working with fractions, so to get rid of fractions, I'm going to multiply everything by my least common denominator. So I'm going to multiply everything by x minus 5, x plus 1. I should probably not put it that far over on the edge of the screen. So, oh, I didn't mean to switch over to yellow. So x minus 5, x plus 1. I'll distribute that onto each of these. So when I did multiply on the first ones, the x minus 5s will cancel. So we'll get 3x, x plus 1, equals, well, the x plus 1s will cancel, so 2, x minus 5. And lastly, both the x minus 5 and x plus 1s are going to cancel. So we'll get uh, pl sorry, plus 2x squared plus 40. Distributing everything. 3x squared plus 3x equals 2x minus 10 plus 2x squared plus 40. I'll subtract uh, my 2x squared over, so I'll have just x squared plus 3x equals 2x, and then minus 10 plus 40, I'll say it's plus 30. And I'll subtract, subtract both of these over, so x squared plus x minus 30 equals 0. And this actually is going to factor to x plus 6, x minus 5 equals 0. So, I think my answers are x equals minus 6 and x equals 5. But, remember, my restrictions, I can't equal 5, so I'm going to get rid of that one. So my only answer is that x equals negative 6. Okay, so for these next ones, we're going to solve the rational equations. So for a, we have square root of 2x minus 5 plus 7 equals 12. I'm going to subtract the 7 over. 2x minus 5 equals 5. Now I'm going to square both sides. When you square something involving a square root, square root disappears. On the other side, we'll get 25. I'll add 5 over, so 2x equals 30. So divide uh, each side by 2, so x equals 15. And just to be sure, I'm going to plug that back in and check. So square root of... 2 times 15 minus 5. That's a really tall square root. It's a little bit better. Plus 7 equals 12. 2 times 15 is square root of 30 minus 5. Plus 7 equals 12. 3 minus 5 is 25. Square root of 25 is 5. 5 plus 7 is 12. So that checks out. So that's good. We don't have to worry about anything. So answer for the first one is x equals 15. Now for the second one, I'm going to start somewhat similar, and I'm going to try to get the square root by itself on the left side. So I'll subtract the 2 over. Then I'll square both sides. So I get x plus 18. It's going to be x minus 2 squared, and I can you know, foil that out here if I need to. What you should get is x squared minus 4x plus 4. So I'll just use that. I'll move over x, I'll move over 18. So I'll get 0 is going to equal x squared minus 5x. Uh, that's going to be minus 14. And that factors to x minus 7, x plus 2. 
So my answers are x equals 7 and x equals negative 2. So going back to check these, I'll check 7. So square root of 7 plus 18 plus 2 equals 7. 7 plus 18 is 25. Square root of 25 is 5. So 7 equals 7. That works out. So that one definitely works. Well, let's check for negative 2 as well. Square root of negative 2 plus 18 plus 2 equals minus 2. Square root of 16 plus 2 equals minus 2. Square root of 16 is 4 plus 2 equals minus 2. Two plus, uh, 4 plus 2 is 6 equals minus 2. That does not work out. So that is not true. So that was, uh, we call it extraneous. It's a solution that we find but doesn't actually work. For this one, the only answer is x equals 7. Moving on to this last page for this video. Uh, question 15 is telling us to make an appropriate substitution to solve the quadratic like equation. So when it's quadratic like, the idea is this, the power of that is twice the power of this. So I'll take this thing in the middle, and I'll say that's my u. So everywhere I see an x to the one third, I'll place with a u. This is an x to the one third squared, because one third squared is the same thing as two thirds. So this becomes a u squared minus two u equals twenty four. We'll also subtract the twenty four over. And this is actually going to factor. We'll get u minus 6 times u plus 4 equals 0. So we get u equals 6 and u equals minus 4. From there, I can, well, okay, I solve for u, but I'm asking, my question is involving x's, so I need to make sure my answers are left in x's. So I replace both of these u's here with x to the one third. And I'll solve for x. So to uh, get rid of the one third, I'll raise each side of the third power. Uh, six to the third is two sixteen. Minus four to the third. This whole thing's to the third power is going to be negative sixty four. And I can go ahead and check those back. Make sure they work, and they, and they both will in this case. Um, I'm just going to kind of skip the process of showing it. So our answers are x equals 216, x equals negative 64. But just remember, it's always good to go back and plug it back in. Okay, going on to this next one. We are we have that we need to solve the inequality and get the set inequality. And then we need to write the solution in interval notation and graph the set. So uh, we have that minus 5 is greater than 6 times x minus 4 plus 7. So I'll subtract the 7 from both sides. Minus 12 is greater than 6, x minus 4. Divide each side by 6, then x minus 4, which is just, I can just rewrite that as just x minus 4. Add 4 to the other side, so we get 2 is greater than, or x is less than 2, or 2 is greater than x. Those mean the same thing. So basically, my solution set, in interval notation, well, it's going to be everything less than 2. So we start at the very bottom. It's going to be negative infinity. We do parentheses because you can't ever like, technically reach it. And our upper, our upper thing is going to be 2. And we're going to do parentheses because we're not including it. It has to be strictly less than that. And yeah, that's every number less than 2. When we try to graph it, I'll do a little small graph right here. Right here is 2. I'll put an open circle. And it's all of this stuff. I'll, I'll put an arrow to show that, like, you know, it's everything below. I probably shouldn't make that arrow so big, though. I'll, I'll, let me just erase the end of it so I can see the next one. And, yeah, that's it for that one. The second one was to solve the compound inequality. Minus 6 is less than or equal to minus 3x plus 9. So give me a second to clean up my space, and I'll start on it. Okay. So what, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll rewrite this on the side. First thing we do is subtract 9 from each, so minus 15 is less than or equal to minus 3x, which is less than minus 9. And I'll divide everything by negative 3. Now, 
it's important to note when you divide or multiply by a negative, all your signs flip. So minus 15 divided by minus 3 is positive 5, and then this is going to flip to greater than x. And uh, minus 9 divided by negative 3 is positive 3, and that's also going to flip because we divided or multiplied by a negative. So my solution set, well, x has to be bigger than 3, so that's going to be my, my lower one. And it has to be less than or equal to 5, so next is going to be 5. And I'll put a bracket because I can be equal to 5. And now when I'm going to graph it, I'll have 3, I'll have 5. I'll put a close, an open circle there and a closed circle here. It has everything in the middle. So, on to the next one. Solve the absolute value equation. Minus 4 plus absolute value of x plus 8 is equal to minus 3. First thing I'm going to do... For, well, actually, the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite it. I'm going to add the uh, 4 over, so absolute value of x plus 8 equals positive 1. Now, it's important to know whenever we undo this absolute value, we're going to have a positive and a negative version of it. Because if this inside thing is equal to negative 1, the absolute value of negative 1 still will give us 1. So it's going to be two versions, x plus 8 is equal to negative 1 and x plus 8 equals positive 1. Subtracting 8 from this one, we get x equals negative 9. Subtracting 8 from this one, we get x equals negative 7. So if x is either negative 7 or negative 9, this will be true. So we're going to list both answers. x equals minus 7 and x equals minus 9. And now we're done with that one. For the next one, I want us to solve the following absolute inequalities and then write the solution set interval notation and graph the solutions. So, starting on this first one, first thing we're going to do is we'll add the 2 over, so it's be less than 18. Now, this is kind of tricky. I would like to think about when I drop this absolute inequality, I'm going to have two situations. One where it's just still less than 18. In one where it's gonna have to be, uh, there's gonna be one where it's uh, the 18 is gonna stay positive, one where it's gonna become negative. But when something becomes negative, you have to switch that inequality. So solving for x on both of these, minus x is gonna be less than 14. And this one minus x is gonna be greater than negative 22. Dividing by a negative on both, it will flip one more time. So x is going to be greater than minus 14. And x is going to be less than 22. And because this is like describing like something on the inside. One way I, you can think about it is if your absolute value is less than something else, these both have to be true. So this is going to be where these overlap. In other words, my solution is going to be when I, when I draw this, or first I'll do my interval notation. I'll, do, I'll write these on the left side. It's going to be from minus 14 to 22. Because x, because my absolute value is less than this number, it has to be on the inside of these two bounds. If it was flipped like, greater than number, then it'd be outside and it could be one or the other. But because there's the overlap, we're just going to only focus on the overlap. Then my graph will have minus 14, my, uh, then positive 22. I'll put two open circles because we're not including either. It's everything in the middle. Okay. Going on to the next one. We have 2, absolute value of x plus 3. Minus 4 is less than or equal, or sorry, greater than or equal to. 6, I'll add the 4 over. Didn't mean to go in race. 2, absolute value of x plus 3. Greater than or equal to 10, divide by the 2. So I'll have absolute value of x plus 3. Greater than or equal to 5. So now I'll do the thing where I'll split it up. So it's either going to be everything's going to stay positive and the sign is a flip, or the 5 is going to switch to negative and the sign does flip. I can solve for x in both of these, so that's going to be x is greater than or equal to 2. 
next is less than or equal to negative 8. So because our inequality right here, our absolute value is, out, is bigger than our number, we're on the outside edges of our graph. So when I draw it, and I'll have to redraw this one to give us space for the next thing. I'll have 2 of minus 8. Well, this x has to be greater than 2. So this will be all the stuff on this edge and including 2. And this one has to be less than, so it'll be all the stuff on this edge. And we can check this, by the way, by plugging in numbers like, you know, here, here, and here. Like on each part of this, these um, inequalities and seeing like, is that still going to be true? In this case, it will be. My interval notation is going to be parentheses, negative infinity. I'll put, I'll put this a little lower. Negative infinity, comma, minus 8, bracket, because we can include 8, union, 2, comma, infinity. And that's our final answer for that one. So then for this next one, it gives us two points. And once we find the following, the exact distance between the two points and the approximation of that. Uh, so to figure out our distance, we're going to use our distance formula. It's going to be x1, x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. And it's the abs sorry, not abs sorry, square root of that whole thing. So... I'll say x1, y1, x2, y2. So it's going to be the square root of minus 7 minus 2 squared plus minus 4 minus 5 squared. Uh, minus 7 minus 2 is going to be minus 9 squared. And then minus 9 squared. So negative 9 squared is 81. And the... the Again, 81. So we're going to square root of 162. And we can actually simplify this down. Um, I believe this simplifies, which by the way, this is an exact answer, but sometimes they'll want you to simplify it. Um, this is the same thing as 2 times 81, which is the same thing as 2 times 9 times 9. Because I have two different 9s, I can pull one of them out. So 9 square root of 2. In my decimal approximation, I just got to plug, that, plug this into my calculator. 9 square root of 2 is 12.73. For our midpoint, uh, we can use our midpoint formula because that's the next part. Our midpoint is x1 plus x2 over 2 comma y1 plus y2 over 2. Using that, minus 7 plus 2. Know that the, the sign changes. This is minus right here, and this is now plus. Just be careful with that. Minus 4 plus 5 over 2. Uh, minus 7 plus 2 is going to be minus 5 over 2. Minus 4 plus 5 is going to be 1 over 2. And that's my midpoint. So that one was a bit quicker. So... I rewrite this all close to the question and we'll move on to the next one. Okay, so for this next one, we gotta find our x intercepts and our y intercepts of the equation uh, 3x minus 5y equals 60. Well, x intercept, if I think about this on the graph, that's the one here, y is 0 for x int. For my y intercept, x is 0. So I can just plug in 0 for x or 0 for y. So first to find my, I'll find my y-intercept first. So y would be 3 times 0 minus 5y equals 60. 3 times 0 is 0, so we get minus 5y equals 60. That gives us y equals minus 12. Note that y-intercepts and x-intercepts, those are coordinates. So we got to make sure we include our uh, x value with that as well. So it's going to be 0 comma minus 12. And that is my y. For my x, well, we're just going to do the same thing. But instead, we'll plug 0 in for our y. It gives us 3x equals 60. x is 20. So our x coordinate is going to be 20, 0. That is our x coordinate. Now we're done. 
Okay, last one on this video. Find the center and radius of the circle defined by the equation x squared minus or x squared plus y squared minus 10x plus 18y equals 26. Or minus 26 equals 12. Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna group my x stuff together. So x squared minus 10x. I'll group my y stuff together. I'll go ahead and I'll add this to the other side. So it's gonna equal 38. And what I have to do is I have to complete the square on both of these. So when I complete the square on this one, I'll take this minus 10, divide it by 2, give us minus 5. If I square minus 5, you get 25. So I'm going to add 25 to both sides. So x squared minus 10x plus 25. And I'm going to do the same thing with this one. So I'll do 18 over... I can go back and write these real quick. 18 over 2 is going to be 9. 9 squared... 81, so I'll add 81 to both sides. So on this right side, I gotta make sure I add the 25 and the 81. Okay, so from here, this part right there can factor. What's gonna factor to? X minus 5 squared. And I mentioned in a previous one, this minus 5, same minus 5 from right there. Second thing's gonna factor. What's gonna factor to? Y plus 9 squared. This plus 9, same plus 9 right there. And on this right side, we're going to get 144 if we just add all this together. So this is now the equation of a circle. I should have mentioned that before. That's what I'm trying to get to. Go to the equation of a circle. How does it help us? Well, that's in the equation of a circle is in the form of x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, where r is your radius and h comma k is our center. So in this case, our center is 5 comma negative 9, because the sign flips. So our center is 5 comma minus 9. And our radius, well, our radius can be the square root of that number, square root of 144, is 12. And now we're finished.